Having covered the internal site architecture and 2100 MHz refarm to 4G process for Vodafone Ericsson and O2 Nokia sites, I feel it's now time to talk about the O2 Ericsson internal site architecture and how the refarm happens. The O2 Ericsson region covers a substantial amount of area of the UK, with it including most of the northeast of England, from Doncaster, Sheffield, Leeds, Bradford, and Hull. Pretty much above Hull in the northeast of England is, is a fair bet. But there are some oddities, like for example, Doncaster is an Ericsson zone, whereas Scunthorpe and Lincoln are Nokia. So it's not quite just sort of northeast clear cut. In terms of Scotland, it's pretty much all of Scotland apart from Glasgow that counts as the Ericsson zone and Northern Ireland in its entirety is also an O2 Ericsson zone. This video will be focusing on Beacon 1 setups, so these have full multi-operator radio access network sharing, which does have some implications for what we are going to talk about, specifically with regards to Vodafone only being able to operate 10 megahertz paired of 2100 megahertz in this architecture compared to in other architectures in different zones where they can operate with up to 14.8 megahertz paired in this band. So before the refarm, O2 and Vodafone both have two downlink and two uplink carriers. So O2 has their 10637 and 10661 in the downlink and Vodafone has 10687 and 10712. As part of this refarm, both operators tend to get refarmed at the same time. So then you get O2's 4G carrier on EARFCN 199 and Vodafone's on 299, both operating with 10 megahertz of downlink bandwidth. So now let's move on to the radio architecture of these sites. I will start off talking about the 900 megahertz and 800 megahertz equipment before I then move on to talk about the 2100 megahertz before and after the 4G refarm process. The 900 megahertz equipment architecture is quite similar fundamentally to the Vodafone Ericsson sites. There are the RUS radios and they are fed off two DUGs which are for GSM so 2G and a DUW which is for WCDMA or 3G because these sites are running 2G and 3G on 900 megahertz. Each radio's two interfaces to baseband or digital unit are being used so each radio has one feed to the DUW and then also one to a DUG. The DUW has six connections to the radios, so one to each radio. Meanwhile, the DUGs have only got three, so one DUG is doing GSM for three radios, and the other DUG is doing GSM for the other three radios. And then the back wall interfaces from these connect to the SIU. So for the DUW is connected by fibre to the SIU and the DUGs each are fed over E1, T1, two interfaces per DUG to the SIU. For the 800 megahertz, there are two different architectures in use. The first uses a pair of DUS digital units. So each radio has one feed from one digital unit and one feed from the other digital unit with each of the DUSs having six connections to radios. The digital units each have a fiber feed to the SIU. The second configuration is rather different. So this uses a DUS once again, but the DUS sends three feeds to a baseband R503, and then the baseband R503 sends two feeds to each radio. So it's a very different configuration and the baseband R503 is essentially just acting as a demultiplexer and multiplexer in this configuration. So it's kind of converting the three feeds from the DUS to then 12 to feed the radios. 
and once again the DUS connects to the SIU. The 2100 MHz configuration before refarming to 4G is quite bizarre in some ways. So the radios, the 2100 MHz RUS radios, are fed in simple terms from a pair of DUWs, which is pretty much as expected. It's 3G, so there are 3G digital units here. However, the way that these DUWs are connected to the radios and to each other is a little bit bizarre. So the first DUW on the left has three feeds to the radios. So each feed from that DUW is effectively feeding two radios. So feed goes to radio one and then radio one connects to radio two. And then the next feed from the DUW connects to radio three and then radio three connects to radio four and so on. The second baseband mounted underneath has a feed from its port F to port F on the first baseband and from its IDL to the IDL port on the first baseband. The main DUW on the left of the radios is connected by RJ45 to the SIU. For the 2100 MHz refarm from 3G to 4G, the 3G only capable DUW is switched out for a DUS and baseband R503. And in fact, this configuration is exactly the same as the 800 MHz configuration number two that I showed earlier. So the DUS connects to the SIU and then it sends three feeds off to the baseband R503 and the R503 then sends off 12, so two to each of the 2100 MHz radios. The DUW sat underneath the radios there is decommissioned now because there is no 3G operating on 2100 MHz and in fact the DUSs are multi-mode capable anyway so it's not required. Thanks for watching this video about the O2 Ericsson radio architecture and the 2100 MHz refarm process on Beacon 1 sites. This obviously uh, leaves the window wide open to now do a video about the Beacon 2 O2 setups, which introduce a greater level of flexibility for the O2 host as well as the Vodafone sharer in terms of both operators deploying a lot of capacity using their high bands that they don't both have, so 2300 MHz in the case of O2 and 2600 MHz in the case of Vodafone, combined the different architecture for the other bands.